cushy advantage. They are 86 leading Whittlesey, 54, 32 points is the difference there. We know that, as we said from the outset, a draw would be enough for Hurstbridge, given they have the superior percentage. We will also cross later on in the uh, in the quarter to uh, Ben Pescusi, who's at Main Street Reserve, where Thomastown is 7, 12, 54, trailing uh, Diamond Creek, who is 12, 11, 83. Here it's 55 to 32 in favour of St Mary's. We might uh, cross over to uh, Nick Sacco. Nick, you were out at the huddle at quarter time. What was the message you heard from uh, from ground level? Yeah, I was at Steve Late's court pre quarter time huddle again. He's a very positive huddle, that one. They, they feel like they've got a chance to come back. He's seen enough in that third quarter for them to convince his team that they have every opportunity to win this game. They just need to keep winning the stoppages, and they need to be aware of St. Mary's spread. They didn't do it enough in the first quarter, but throughout the game, St. Mary's spreading has been fantastic, and if they can halt that and get the game back on their terms, they're every chance of winning this and, game. And from an injury point of view, Panton Hill looks to be still at, uh, with four players on the interchange? At this stage, it is. It's getting a lot warmer, but there's every chance of an injury, but at the moment it's pretty good so the umpire holds the ball aloft and we're ready to go here final term in the Heidelberg Golf Club Division 3 second semi-final ball thrown back up Todd is in the middle he wins the first clearance of the term last half hour here for well, one of these teams in, these ga in this game but don't forget this is a qualifying match so the loser will stay on next week and play in the prelim final the winner however goes straight into the granny and the ball from the clearance from Todd has rolled out of play across right half forward. St. Mary 7.13.55 to Panton Hill 4.8.32. And the ball's thrown in across right half forward. Ronalds is there. He lays the tackle. Spins his man around. Dober gets it. He's had it stripped off him. It's Forster who plays it out to Freeman. Freeman a high ball to half forward for Anderson. Out number two to one. Bergman and, and uh, Todd there. Anderson dives back in and keeps the ball alive for Panton Hill. Throws himself on top of it. And it will be a ball up at left half forward. 65 from home for Panton Hill. They got themselves within 14 points in that second term. Uh, pardon me, in that third term. Uh, before St. Mary's kicked two quick ones through Nick Dean. So Panton Hill know that they can get within St. Mary's. But they just need to hold off the bar the other way. The kick from half back works up to half forward. It's Lucci who takes the grab. He squares the ball in field to Potter. Potter on the front corner of the square. He measures off the kick inside the forward line. He was looking for Goulden. His man fell over in Gurkovic. He almost had a free go at it, but Gurkovic recovered to make the contest. And then Gurkovic dives in again on Goulden, who's on hands and knees now trying to win it back. It's back to Sam Parks. Montanaro, Erickson weaves his way out of trouble. And Panton Hill clear their defensive 50. The kick from Erickson was aiming for Sadakis. It was out number two to one. Dambrowskis win wins it back for St. Mary's. A high ball inside for a uh, full forward. Potter off hands. Dean there had it, lost it, wins it back. Now Erickson has it. It's back and forth in this term so far. It's a punchy handball that comes out to Duckworth. And now Sam Parks, he strolls off half back for Panton Hill and kicks further up the wing. And it's off the hands of Anderson and a few others who are in the marking contest. And it goes out of play for a throw. Obviously, Panton Hill have kept uh, Anderson forward here. They obviously recognise that they just need to kick any, any winning score here this afternoon. No point having him in the back line. Percentage certainly not going to play a factor today, given the fact that it's uh, well, not so much a do-or-die final, but uh, we obviously don't have uh, any, any worry what the final margin is. So they've got to roll the dice here. And they might get the ball forward as Fowler had possession. He was looking for the high ball, but wasn't paid. So it's going to be a ball up. Still defensive side of centre for Panton Hill. About 80 out from the St Mary's goal as the Ruckman go at it. Parks won that one down for Panton Hill. At ground level, Fowler tries to run onto it. Todd did really well to just uh, get his body in the road. Now that's going to be a high free kick to Fowler. And the inside midfielder has the ball defensive side of the centre circle for Panton Hill. He can spread it wide. He had Dines on his outside. Oh, Didn't no. want to go that way. Ended up running straight into the man of the mark. But fortunately, he <laughs> wore one high. So he gets a second free kick. And he might be in a bit of strife here. He's a bit slow to uh, get up here, Matty Fowler. So uh, he ran directly at the man of the mark there. It might have been was a Daisley. He's slow to get to his feet. So we hope he's okay. But uh, certainly uh, wasn't the best moment. He slipped almost as uh, he went into that tackle, but he gets a free kick. He's back to his feet now, and he should be okay to continue. No, just a bit embarrassing, if anything, <laughs> for Fowler. He'll get a second chance. <laughs> He's at centre-half back. Out towards right half forward. He angles the kick wide for Reese Boyd and bounces over his head. Running onto it is Rushton. He'll kick it from 45 metres. It'll drop in the goal square. And it's taken by Potter, who marks at true full back. Rushton perhaps could have taken an extra five metres. And now Petroro has it for St. Mary's on their back flank. Near side of the ground. 
His kick travels up the wing. Yeomans flies, hangs in the air, takes the grab. Wheels around Ericsson and kicks on the left boot towards half forward. It's a two on two contest on the near side. And the play is extinguished by Milk, who slaps a hand at it and plays it out of bounds. So sooner rather than later, the clock also becomes an issue for Panton Hill. They trail here by 23. They only kicked the four goals for the entire day. They need to double that in the last quarter. We've already gone four minutes in. They haven't got the ball deep inside 50 yet, but at halfback, they're in possession of, through Fowler. Gave the handball off, and now a kick towards centre wing was looking for Dines. Petroro hands to it. Now he gets the handball from Todd, and Petroro kicks St Mary's towards half forward, waiting under that foot. He was Potter. Couldn't quite take the mark. Good pressure coming from behind by Mill. And it forces a throw in. 50 out from the St Mary's goal. They lead here four and a half minutes into this final term. 7-3, in fact, 7-13, 55 St Mary's. Panton Hill, four goals, 8-32. So ball thrown back in. Dober doing the ruck work. It bounces off to a teammate. It's deep in the pack. Johnson and Forster, the last to wrestle for it. The umpire calls for it again. Ball thrown up. Dober goes up, wins it down to Ronalds, who hacks it forward, a high kick into the hot spot. Underneath it, Mark taken at full forward. And Maria shot at goal, and this to make it the biggest lead of the day. Miles Goulden takes the grab. The leading goal scorer for St Mary's this season. 45 coming into today. He's scored one already. And Miles Goulden wipes the sweat off his hands across the back of his shorts. He tees things up, kicking to the A road end. Gordon pierces the goals and gives St. Mary's their biggest advantage of the afternoon. It's 8-13-61 St. Mary's to Panton Hill, 4-8-32. The margin is out to 29 points. We've got five and a half minutes last term. That just might be the goal that puts St. Mary's through to its first grand final. Gordon kicks his second goal. He kicked their first earlier in the day and they now lead by 29 points. 8-13-61 St. Mary's, Panton Hill, 4 8 32 around the grounds is closing up at Main Street Reserve. Thomas Town within 23 points. Eight goals, 12 60 to Diamond Creek, 12 11 83. Back in the center, Nick Parks wins it down. Coming through with a, a bit of a dash is Haynes, who lays it inside the forward 50, wanting Reese Boyden, but again, he's outpointed. Minners across the back line. He's lost out to Sadakus, who sweeps a handball in board to Haynes, who's now finding himself in the goal square. He kicks towards goal, and Panton Hill respond in an instance. And Daniel Haynes kicks Panton Hill's fifth goal of the afternoon. 5-8-38, the Redbacks. The St. Mary's 8-13-61. So at least they can respond, and they've just kept themselves maybe yeah. with a slight sniff. Certainly not lying down here, Panton Hill. So they're going to make St. Mary's work all the way for this victory if they can get there. 5-8-38, Panton Hill. St. Mary's 8-13-61. Just shy of seven minutes played. So there's still ample time for Panton Hill, but they do need to get a hurry along. That one certainly helps from Daniel Haynes. Back in the middle, 61 to 38. So still a glimmer of hope here for Panton Hill if they can get a roll on on the back of that last goal. Now charging through here and losing possession was Fowler. Uh, partially smothered was the kick there from Gedge. Ball still in dispute right in the heart of the Whittlesey showground. Masuto had hands on it for a second. Now the ball comes out to Hocking. He was dispossessed. And then a tumbling ball out towards the boundary this time from Manus. Is it going to reach the boundary? No, it's just kept in there by Potter. He was slammed down in a big tackle. Now Panton Hill has got the numbers here through Parks of the Samuel variety. He goes in short. Finds Dines. Dines has got a man, big man in the middle. Decides not to go that way. That's an ugly ball. Way oh. out of bounds on the floor. And that's a let off of the pressure for St Mary. He was trying to say that there's a player too close in on his side. He was impeding him, but certainly they can't afford uh, moments like that if they are going to pick their way back into this game. Todd has it. He wedges the kick over the top to Masudo, who has been good this afternoon. Takes the mark behind centre wing. Anderson mans the mark. Masudo chips it over the top for Petroro. Who runs into the fly of the footy and holds it against his chest. Standing right in the gates of St Mary's bench. Petroro leathers it down the field to right half forward. They'll all fly. And over the top, flying highest was Nick Parks of Panton Hill, and he sent it out of play. It'll be a throw in on right half forward. St. Mary's moving down this near wing. Ball thrown in. It's going to be Parks and uh, Galea doing the ruck work. Galea shrugs Parks out of the contest. He paddles it down front and centre, then loses control of it, and it runs out of play to be thrown in once more. 61 plays 38. We've gone eight and a half minutes in this final term in the second semi final. Winner goes into the grand final a fortnight from now, and the loser will play the winner of tomorrow's. 
this first semi-final between South Morang and Lorimer. Oh, man just pushed out of the rough, maybe uh, hammed it up a little bit, but he's going to take the free kick anyway. Here's Galea with the ball now. Long towards full forward, searching for the high flyer. There was a high flyer and a great mark there at the back for Panton Hill, Brent Ryan. Moves it across with a dangerous little switch. The ball's just going to pitch just inside the field of play. Dambrowskis was dispossessed, so now Panton Hill have a little bit of time to take possession of the ball and move it out of half-back. Dines' kick was dodgy, though. Straight down the throat of St Mary's man. Ball into the middle for Gedge. Floated up for him, but there was not too much pressure on him. And then another chipping ball in towards half four. The two St Mary's boys didn't talk and spoiled each other in the end. And now Panton Hill threw foul or a tumbling ball up towards the up towards the middle. But another intercept mark taken this time by Todd. We've just got Ben Pascuzzi on the line now. It's getting close out at uh, Main Street Rec Reserve. Ben, back to a 23-point ball game. Yes, boys. The Muzz has actually now gone down to 21 points. Tom have kicked the first two behinds of the fourth quarter, but there's an absolutely incredible end to that third term for Thomastown. They kicked the last four goals of the term after conceding the first two, and they dominated the inside 50 count, 17 to 6. So Thomastown definitely playing with all the momentum, and it looks like we are in for a thriller here at Main Street Reserve. Well, at the moment, it's still uh, Diamond Creek inside the top four by uh, 1%. What was the message uh, from Ben Chapman to his uh, crew if you're out of that huddle at the last quarter? Just to get the ball forward and try and kick as many goals as possible to get the win. Indeed. Well, thanks for that, Ben Pascuzzi. We'll keep updated throughout this last term. Thank you. Back here, the ball's at half full. We've got to throw up uh, about 50 out from the St Mary's goal. Oh, got a bit of elevation there that time, Galea. Didn't get the tap down, though. Penton Hill come out of the stoppage with a bouncing ball that was a little bit awkward initially there for Conti, but he's done it pretty well running through. Sorry, it wasn't Conti, it was Haynes. He's able to get the handball off, but it was intercepted there by Castagnini on the outer wing. Couldn't take it cleanly, though. He's been... Uh, He's fumbled it over the line, so it's going to be thrown in. Out of sight of the Whittlesey Showgrounds, 61 plays 38. 11 minutes played in this final term. Centre wing right across that Monday market side of the grounds, looking over to the mountains where King Lake is a bit over in the distance. Very picturesque ground here at Whittlesey. He's holding the ball free kick on the wing. And so it'll be brought back and it'll be a St Mary's ball. On the outer side, looks like it's uh, Tate who has it. And so St Mary's taking their time with this kick, knowing that they have the game in the palm of their hands. As long as they keep this advantage. Dean has it. On the outer side, right-footed kick inside the forward 50. Looking for Gordon, aiming for Gordon. Gordon didn't take the mark, but he won it as he stripped it off his direct opponent. Now to Gedge in the forward pocket. Ronald shrugs one off. He dances around another, but that time... Well, he bit off a bit more than he could chew that one. Dylan Ronalds, he almost made it work. But Anderson was there diving in and slapped it out of his hands and over the boundary line. Left forward pocket is where the ball will be thrown in. St Mary's 61, Panton Hill 38. Left forward pocket, it's Anderson and Dean in the ruck. Dean wins the tap down, but Sam Parks clears away for Panton Hill. It drops into the arms of Haynes, who marks. As he turns back in board, he holds his hand up to shield his eyes from the sun. And then he plays it down the field. A high kick to Boyden, who gets up, but he couldn't hold the mark. He had great elevation, Reese Boyden. He got a second spring as well. And then there's another flying mark on the outer side through Haynes, who didn't get up as high that time. He didn't take the mark either. And then it goes back up the wing, back and forth between both sides. And in the end, Sullivan takes the relieving mark. That was as high as I've seen anyone get in the Northern Football Netball League. It's a shame that Reese Boyden couldn't hold that. It would have been mark of the year. Derham cuts it across half-back, sorry, Giordo. Manus, he moves it further afield to Petroro. St Mary's are going here on the near wing. Petroro just holds it up for half a second. Got Daisley down the line. Decides to go in board. That's not a bad one, finds Potter. Sorry, I, just, I haven't seen Reese Boyd and take a contested mark all day. I don't blame him for trying something different. He, first got, he got one in uh, the first quarter to set up his first goal, but since then he's been pretty quiet. But uh, St Mary's have just coughed it up here at half forward. So Panton Hill going through the middle of the ground now through Higgins. His sweeping handball over the top sets free Pritchard. And now chipping ball over the top is not a bad one. Panton Hill maintaining possession. Out of side. Right in front of the scoreboard they are right now. And then a long kick up towards a hot spot. So four on one here with St Mary's. That ball was always going to be knocked over the line and out of play. Jonty Rushton tried his best, but... There was no way he was going to win that one. 
So scores haven't changed since Daniel Haynes scored his goal in the uh, seventh minute of the game. We've gone another seven minutes since then. So the ball is inside the forward 50 here across right half forward. And what can they do here, Panton Hill? Ball thrown back in. It's Galea in the ruck with Rushton. Galea always will outsize Rushton in that contest. But the ball rolls to Higgins on right half forward. Handball over the back of his head, aiming for Sam Parks, but lost out and Castagnini wins it back. He punches the ball out towards uh, Yeomans, who does very well to beat his man. Underground handball to himself, and then sockers it off the ground. The kick hugs the boundary line, but there's only Panton Hill numbers getting back. Ryan had it. He lost his footing at the last moment. His knees buckled beneath him, and that puts uh, St. Mary's back into play. Yeomans continued his run up the wing. He was pushed over the boundary line. Has it been given a free kick here, Samuel? Now I think they've uh, just had asked for a throwing. They, they wanted to push in the back to St. Mary's Faithful. Around the grounds, Hurstbridge 13-9-87 leads. Whittlesey 10-8-68. And uh, elsewhere, McLeod leading Northcote Park 87-23. Heidelberg 74 trails Mont 77. Bandura 66 leads North Heidelberg 58. And West Preston 82 leads Greensboro 45. Anderson flipped it down behind him from the ruck contest. And it's uh, been taken by Gedge. And he goes to ground immediately. We'll have another stoppage. A ball up in the 15-minute mark on this in this game. Last term of the second semi-final. All to play for here. St. Mary's have been the better team this afternoon. They've always held that advantage. It's been uh, in the 20s, the margin, since the start of the second term. And it stayed that way all the way to this point here, halfway through the last. They've always been about three and a half goals ahead. Dean gets it. He slaps it off his boot and pokes it forward. Over the top, Ryan flew. He swung a fist at it and punches it over the boundary line for a throw. Time is beginning to get away from Panton Hill. 15 and a half minutes gone here in the last quarter. They need a revival and they need it quickly if they're going to get the week off and the pass into the grand final. It looks like it's going to be St. Mary's at this point. So at ground level, charging through. Can't get it out. Is Conti. Big tackle laid by Dean. Another stoppage. So time's certainly the enemy now for Panton Hill. We've gone 16 minutes in this last quarter. Only the one goal kicked for the term. That was going, in fact, two goals for the term, one apiece. It's 61 plays 38. Conti again goes in hard. Ball's being worked out towards the boundary. Every time Panton Hill take possession of the ball, they are set upon by a massive amount of pressure from St Mary's. They're finding it difficult to move the ball cleanly. Ball's going to be thrown in again. Boundary umpire just getting ready here. Dean going up against Parks, as they have done. Well, Parks has been in there for most of the day. Dean's just done the work in the forward half. A whistle has gone here on this occasion. It's going to be a free kick to Panton Hill. Almost works against him now, not having the advantage. It just allows the St Mary's players to, to roll back. And you can just see every player just about on the field pushing back now towards the uh, the half-forward line for St Mary's. This ball uh, deep in St Mary's are taking 50, so it does work against Panton Hill, this one. They can just control, if St Mary's can just control the position of the ball for the next five minutes, they should be home. They can keep it inside their forward half. They should be all right. Short ball to four-star. Panton Hill working up to the wing. Higgins. He found uh, Duckworth. Duckworth had his handball shut down. He bounces out to Gedge, who shrugs off a tackle, but then he's met again by Conti, who nails him. And Conti wins the free kick across right half back. And the former Greensboro man, one of many. He has it on that far side. He pumps it further up the line, hoping for a contested mark. There was a few flies. Reese Boyden again wanted the fly, and there's a free kick given away in this contest. Reese Boyden was pushed as he went to uh, try and grab that in the contest. And Boyden chips it out wide first. Fowler takes Break the mark up. on half forward. On too. Now Fowler just underneath the electronic scoreboard looking for an option inside the forward 50. There's a few options working for him. He decides to go short first up. Erickson has it. He wedges it over the top. He was looking for the short option in Anderson, but there was a St. Mary's defender who got in the way. Uh, the Borough have won it back through Potter. Now Todd. Todd spirals the kick back into the centre square. It bounces unkindly for Ryan. One back by Yeomans. He, sl he slides it out for Ronalds. Sam Parks comes in. Off to Ryan. Ryan lost it. Got it back again. Works it out towards Duckworth. Duckworth misses it. Now Gedge for St. Mary's going back the other way. Kicks for the line. And the umpires say it was... Just a boundary throwing. Okay, getting all clear. Yeah. 
Diamond Creek's just settled to kick the two of the last three goals at Main Street Reserve. Thomastown is nine goals, 16, 70. Diamond Creek, 14, 11, 95. Live ladder has uh, Diamond Creek inside the top four by two and a half percent currently. Conti won the clearance at ground level. A couple of players scrapping for it, wrapped up in a big tackle, Jake Johnston. So it'll be a secondary stoppage. And the clock keeps ticking down here. It's getting away from Panton Hill in the second semi-final. Up went Dober. St Mary's to go inside forward 50 once more. High one up in the golden direction it was. A little Ronald's direction rather. Now the chipping kick it came to ground level and the chip kick came out of half back here for Panton Hill. That was Ryan kicking it to Parks. Parks takes the mark, about 60 to 70 metres out for a defensive goal. Brings it in board now. Oh, it was dodgy ball. It just sat up there and didn't favour his teammate at all. Nice work by Dean. Moves it across. And here's Lucci looking to go inside forward 50 once again. He's usually a pretty good operator by foot. He's got Ronalds on the bounce. He takes possession of it. Has to avoid two. He's got a teammate further afield if he can get it there. Dribbles it to him. The um boundary umpire said it was out of play. St Mary's player thought it wasn't. Just back to that ball, back to the corridor. Certainly was a dicey one. I think it was Parks going back inside, but they just have to roll the dice now, don't they? They're four goals down as we're just about to get into time on of this last quarter. They've just got to throw caution to the wind and find quick avenues to goal. Goal here would just about, well, it would finish it off. Panton Hill working their way around the last line defence through Parks, and that's Ooh. a good kick. <laughs> Had to be centimetre perfect, and it was. Now a little... Chip, oh, the drop, the drop mark is going to possibly be costly here. St Mary's with a chance to sew up a spot in the grand final, but it's touched on the line. The snapping kick around the corner. There was Ericsson who dropped the crucial ball. And the score now as we tick into time on. See St Mary's now with a handy point. They're exactly four goals ahead. 8-14-62 St Mary's. Panton Hill 5-8-38. And the Borough, well, they've just about booked a date with Destiny. Duckworth from full back, a long kick out this time for Panton Hill, hacks it down the far side but it's been taken away and St Mary's win it back through Castagnini who marks, he's told to play on, he moved off his line, he has to be quick, he is left foot inside the forward 50 uh, the quickness has been uh, well, compromises his accuracy and Brent Ryan takes the grab for Panton Hill he moves it further back down the field. Reese Boyd in the target. He's pushed underneath it. Bergman at the back. Squares it for um, uh, Cass, uh, for Dober. Dober lost it. It bounced away from him. Tad, he had his legs taken from underneath him, though the umpire didn't see it that way. And the umpire will come in and ball it up on the wing on the outer side. 62 plays 38. St. Mary's have held their lead all day. It's thrown up on that outer flank. Haynes puts a hand into the chest of Todd. Panton Hill attempting to will this one down the outside of the field, and they might just do it here. Sam Parks has surfaced with the footy. He gets it off to Pritchard. Pritchard uh, steers it out to the far side for Freeman, uh, for uh, Ryan Boyden, who does very well on the pickup. Spins out of traffic. Sam Parks around the corner for Reese Boyden, who again can't take the contested mark. Although Sullivan doesn't do well enough, and it's come out to Panton Hill, and the snapshot of goal goes across the face of goal. It swings away from the teeth of goal. And it comes back out to the far side. It's kept in the field of play. Dines held up in the ruck. I beg your pardon, held up in the tackle. And the umpires will come in and ball it up. Bit of a Hollywood shot on goal in this situation of a big final. There are a couple of options in the middle. Mm. Went the check side on the run. And there's a free kick for Panton Hill from that ruck contest. And so they might have a chance here, though we are into time on. And they have been short quarters today. In the 23rd minute of this game, it'll be Mitch Anderson to line up for his well, second goal. He recognises the uh, the rush. He yeah. ran back to the mark and he's coming in quickly. So Anderson will kick from left half forward. Left foot kick on the way. It's a shocking kick. It wobbles in every direction except for straight through the middle. It's a behind and that might be Panther Hill's last chance, which has just flown past them. Well, the score now reads 39, Panton Hill 62, St Mary. You have to feel for him in that situation because he has to be quick to get the shot on target, but then by going in quick, you probably compromise your, uh, your normal routine and that one there, he, he well and truly shanked, but he was trying to do the right thing by the team, but it just didn't work out there for Anderson. Comes long out from fullback here for St Mary's. Dean had hands on it, as did Dober. Dober trying to crash his way through a couple of tacklers he's not going to get it clear and it's holding the ball didn't know if he had too much pride to get rid of that there but the umpire was hot on it so a long high kick up towards Boyden. and he tries to clunk it he had two hands on it bounced off him Derham's there at the bottom of the pack and sends a spiraling ball out to the outer side here at Whittlesey Showgrounds Goulden the only St Mary's man out there oh he beats two to trap it but the umpire said he's somehow given away a free kick I thought he was just going for the ball 
But the ball comes into Conti now, and Panton Hill with a chance. Going inside forward 50 once more. Castagnini reads it best. Pumps it back out towards the wing. The ball's going to just pitch inside the field of play. Golden once again with a chance. Johnston there trying to help him. And the two St Mary's players and the two Panton Hill players all fall over the line together. 62 plays, 39. Ball in, out of side. Would you say Lee Sullivan's in the running for man of the oh, match? I think yes. he has to be. He's been outstanding in his job on Boyden, just giving him no room. Even before, there's one time Boyden had maybe a, a step or two advantage. He just closed yeah. so quickly and was able to shut it down. Ball thrown in. Hocking gets it. His kick ricochets off the Panton Hill hands. It'll just stay in the field of play. Nick Parks did really well for the Ruckman. Gets it off to his... Uh, Little namesake there in Samuel Parks. It's worked up towards right half forward. Minners swings it back, sweeping up across the back flank. It's a kick which goes up and down in the air. Daisley takes it, hacks it inside the, the uh, centre corridor for Todd, who lost it. Duckworth came barging through, but there's numbers still back there for St Mary's. Todd and Daisley work together. The handball's come out to Sullivan, who motors away across half back. And then the kick comes out to the near side for Potter, who's one on one with Gurkovic. Gurkovic gets his man. Potter's in a bit of tr strife here. And the umpire says nothing more than the ball up. And Jeremy Gurkovic did well to hold Potter up and prevent him from taking that one away. 62 plays 39. 25 minutes gone. Ball thrown back up again. It's one down by Dober. Now Petroro this man goes pace. careering away. Two bounces down the outer flank. He runs in. He chips it inside the forward line. He was looking for a target, but all he found was Brent Ryan taking the intercept grab. He had two options on it. Just pitched right in between both. Happened a couple of times with Petroro. His kicking boots, as you mentioned a couple of times, have been just a little bit off going inside 450, but his line-breaking run's been magnificent. His ball use off half-back's been very solid today. It's just been the forward third that's let him down. As Panton Hill move it towards the outer wing. A little bit, bit of a handball chain and now a chance to go towards forward 50. The kick uh, into Matty Fowler was smothered magnificently, or spoiled rather, should I say. But they've still got a chance here, but that's the siren. And St Mary's are through to the grand final in Heidelberg Golf Club Division 3 for 2018. Panton Hill are playing in the prelim next week. Well, congratulations to the St Mary's Football Club. They are one step closer to their inaugural premiership as a senior entity. The Borough, 8 14 62, have defeated Panton Hill, five goals, 9 39. A 23 point triumph for St Mary's. It is their first win in a final at senior level. And after a 15 and 1 home and away season, the Borough have gone on to take the first place in this year's grand final. Jordan Canellis, it wasn't certainly their. Well, I guess their most elite performance in attack, but defensively, they were just far too good for Panton Hill. They, they just closed them out, really, didn't they, throughout the course oh, yeah. of the game. And after what was, it has to be said, a pretty shaky start, their first seven to uh, ten minutes, certainly not great, but they were able to close out and, in the end, run away for a, a pretty comfortable win. Yeah, no, look, they uh, they did well enough on attack. They uh, only kicked eight goals for the day. Eight goals, 14, won't look good in reflection. They missed a lot of chances. Um, had a couple of rush behinds as well, four rush behinds from Panton Hill. Probably, if anything, just shows how much time that uh, St. Mary's spent in their front half. Um, and Panton Hill had to do the, the, the desperate defensive work to, um, to rush those behinds. But, um, but yeah, eight goals. Look, it wasn't, again, their most elite performance in attack. Although they did show the signs of St. Mary's that we know and that we, we've seen from them this season. Um, as we see Fabian Corelli beneath our commentary box looking very comfortable with himself. Um, and St. Mary's.